to order the environment's teacher's notes for the autumn term, price £1.40, the City Streets Workbook, price £2.95, the City Parks Workbook, price £2.95, and the Trees Software, price £17.75, please contact your local ITV company. Alternatively, send a cheque or postal order to Schools Publications Office, Thames Television, 149 Tottenham Court Road, London, W1P 9LL. There's been a heavy storm and it's still raining. A boat called the Thames Bubbler sets off to look for fish. But this is no ordinary fishing expedition. The Bubbler's captain and his crew aren't out to catch fish, but to save them from dying. When it rains hard, the sewage system floods, allowing raw sewage to overflow straight into rivers like the Thames. As it breaks down, it uses up the oxygen in the water, which the fish need. This week's been particularly bad for us. It's exactly the conditions that the Thames Bubbler is designed to combat. We've just had a very long, hot, dry spell. Uh, the river quality had, had dropped uh, during the dry spell. And now we've got this rain, uh, oxygen levels have dropped uh, dramatically over the last couple of days and if we didn't do anything uh, we would expect to see uh, thousands of dead fish floating through the river uh, through London. Probes in the river measure how much oxygen is in the water so that the captain knows where the boat is needed the most. The bubbler puts back the oxygen by sucking in water from the river and oxygen from the air, mixing the two together and pumping the mixture back into the Thames. It's a bit like blowing air into water through a straw. The dissolved oxygen level got down to nearly 10% yesterday, but uh, looking at today's chart, we're back up to 20%, so we've obviously uh, been effective at uh, stopping things getting any worse and all I'm concerned about now is the uh, likelihood of uh, further rain so we're going to keep operating for a couple of days just until the weather patterns are stabilised. In fact the boat had to work for five days and nights before the danger to the fish was passed. The bubbler cost three and a half million pounds to build and a thousand pounds a day to operate. There are many other things besides sewage that pollute the rivers. What are they and where do they come from? There are lots of mayfly nymphs in here. This group from a school in Kingston, Surrey, are collecting species of water life from the river Hogsmill, a tributary of the Thames near Ewell. Come on, Elaine, stand in front of it and do some nice vigorous kicking. To get and the animals will all end up in the net. And we've done that for a few minutes. Scoop the net towards you, so you don't lose anything. And then go and empty them out in one of the trays. That's it. Oh, just look at that. It's wriggling with life, isn't it? Go and tip it out in the tray and see what you've got. They're taking part in a national survey called Streamwatch. Children up and down the country have been testing their local streams and rivers for pollution. Oh, that is disgusting. It is, isn't it? If you let it settle, we might see some other things that aren't at first sight obvious. back up into the trays and then we can get on and see what we've found. They've collected lots of different water creatures. What have they found that will tell them if the river is polluted? Okay, if we just have a look in this tray, we can see that we've got 
some of these little animals swimming around with three long tails on them. Now, if you have a look on your sheets, right, good, those are the, the swimming mayfly nymphs. Now, we've also got in this tray a lot of these flat ones, it's flattened from side to side, and they swim on their sides. Can you see what those are on the sheet? Freshwater shrimps. Right, freshwater shrimps. Now, what those two animals tell us is that this part of the river is really quite clean, because mayflies and freshwater shrimps can only live in clean water. If there's a lot of pollution there, they will be killed off by it. Right, so that tells us that the river up here at Ewell is really fairly clean. We've got lots of sticklebacks as well. Now, if you have a look on your sheets as well, you'll see that there's, um, on this list here, we've got another animal mentioned, the stonefly. Now, they look a little bit like the mayflies, but they've only got two tails. Now, I haven't actually seen any here today, but if you just have a, a look, we'll see if we can find any of those, because those need even cleaner water than the mayflies to live in. There's one here. Oh, there's one, I think. No, that one's got the three tails again. I think most of these are mayflies, so I don't think we've got any stoneflies here oh, hey, oh, at the moment. <laughs> no, that's got three tails as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Close to its source, the river is quite clean. But what happens to it as it flows past houses, farmland and factories? To find out, the class need to do another test downstream. So they move five miles further down the hogs mill to Kingston, where the river flows through a built-up area. Here, the river is probably polluted. Last week, there was a spillage from the sewage works, which is a short distance upstream, and last week, sewage was seen flowing down the river. So before we put our hands in the river here, we're going to protect them with some plastic gloves. So would you all make sure that you put your hand in a plastic glove and make sure you don't touch the river water, please. We don't want anybody getting any river water into cuts or grazers or anything on their hand. Right. That sewage spillage killed hundreds of fish in this stretch of the river. Has anything like that happened in a river near you? Right, just disturb the bottom a little bit if you can, just stir up some rocks and the weeds. Okay, go and put those in the tray. There's nothing in there. Have you got anything? You have got a few things actually. Yeah, the water lice. You can see there's some little red worms in there. Finding examples of water life in this part of the river is much more difficult. There's two of them. Oh, there's another one there. They're all in the grass as well. Oh, they're small, aren't they? Yeah, they're all in the grass. Keep the net facing upstream as far as you can, like that. That's it. It's good. All right. Just try and run it upstream like that, just scraping against the bottom if you can. See what you get there. All right, what have you got now? Yeah, we've got the budworms, water lice, quite a lot of those. Not a great deal else, is there? Blanket weed. Right. Just a moment. All right. No. Okay. You don't need all of that. Well, let's put some of the weed back. Can we look in the weed? There will be something in there. Let's take a bit of weed. There's a lot of blanket weed here, covering most of the river bed. There wasn't any of that upstream where the first survey was done. That's a sign of pollution. All this blanket weed is a sign of pollution. All this lot has to die sometime, and then it's when it dies that the problem starts, because it dies, and then all that food for bacteria. And the bacteria grow and multiply by feeding on it when it dies, and that's what causes the problem. Chemicals such as phosphates used in fertilizers and in some washing powders get washed into the rivers. They encourage the weeds to grow faster, which uses up the oxygen in the water. Right, we can just gather round and have a look at the animals that we found in the river at Kingston then. What have we found here? <laughs> right, we've got one one stickle back here, haven't we? Okay, what else have we got here? Bloodworms, blood blood right. How do we know they're bloodworms? Right, bright red. And they wiggle around. And they wiggle around. Good, right. What else have we got here? That's 
Yeah, we've got, okay, we've got, we've got, we've got a lot of water lice. Now, we found one or two up at Ewell, didn't we? One or two of the water lice, but we've got quite a lot in the river here. What, what haven't we got here that we saw at Ewell? Shrimps. Right, we haven't got any tench. freshwater shrimps here. We haven't found a tench down here, now. What, what about the other small animals that we found that you all... We haven't, that we haven't, we haven't, we haven't, haven't got anything like as many sticklebacks. And we haven't got the thing with the three tails. What was that? The swimming uh, mayflies. Right, the swimming, swimming mayflies. mayflies. There's no swimming mayflies here. That's, that's a couple of the, the water lice again. So what does that suggest to us about the river here? It's polluted. Right, it's got some sort of pollution. It's obviously not very bad. Otherwise, we'd probably have no life at all. We've got some things living here but it's obviously not as clean and pure as the water up at Ewell. The sort of pollution in rivers, canals, lakes and even in the sea depends on where you live. Near farms, water often contains nitrates from fertilisers. Near factories, it's sometimes polluted with industrial waste. That's bad for fish and animals, but it's also bad for us because most of our drinking water comes from the rivers. In London, for example, three quarters of the drinking water comes from the Thames. This glass of water could have been drunk five times before, and that makes six. You might not like that idea, but of course it gets cleaned at the water treatment works each time. There are five of these along the Thames, and each treats the water once, which is why a glass of water can be drunk six times before it goes back into the river. The water here is filtered through large net drums to remove any big bits of dirt or rubbish, then drained across sand in huge filter beds, which takes out other impurities. This plant processes 94 million gallons of water each day. It never stops working. Why do you think our water needs to be used over and over again? The water has to have chemicals added to kill germs. So first it's treated with chlorine, and then the chlorine is treated by ammonia and sulphur dioxide. This takes lots of dangerous things out of the water, but some harmful substances such as fertilizers and pesticides are very hard to remove. But it's not just farms and factories. We all pollute the water supply every day. family may only use small quantities of chemical cleaners, but just think how many families there are in Britain, and just how much all those chemicals add up. There are some soap powders and cleaners for sale nowadays which do not pollute the water. They don't contain harmful substances, and they're biodegradable, which means that they break down in the water and disappear completely. And it's not only people who need clean water, it's animals and birds too. What can we do about cleaning up the river then? Right, we can all help a little bit by not throwing litter in. We've seen here and up at Ewell, of course, tin cans, bottles, things like that. And they make the place look a mess. What else could be done to clean the river up? Right, improve the sewage works would be an ideal way of cleaning up the river. So if they don't put in any sewage waste into the river here, then 
we could probably find all the same sorts of animals in the river at Kingston as we found uh, up at Ewell. So that would be a good way of improving the state of the river here. Autumn, Winter, Spring and Summer are the titles of four books written by the series advisors that accompany the all-year-round series. The complete set costs £12, individual titles £3.50. They can be obtained by sending a cheque to Discovery Books, Purnell Distribution Centre, Portum, Bristol, BS18, 5LQ. This is Emily and her older brother, Richard. Her younger brothers are David and Matthew. From the top of her climbing frame, Emily can see her dad working in the fields behind their house. They live on a small farm where they grow vegetables for sale at shops and markets. Emily's dad and the people who work for him are busy harvesting gathering the vegetables that are ready for eating. When the beetroot's been tied into bundles and the marrows packed into boxes, they'll be taken to the market. At the back of the farm, Emily's family have a small garden where they grow vegetables for themselves. While Dad's busy in the fields, Mum and the children are harvesting some of these vegetables. All right, got the basket, David. 
Right, Matthew, let's have a look. We'll have a nice lot of potatoes for Daddy's lunch. Oh, oh, nice line here. They're gathering the potatoes that grow beneath the soil. That's the part of this plant that we eat. We don't eat the leaves and stems. Good boy. With peas, it's different. We don't eat the roots, which are below the ground, but we do eat the seeds, which grow inside these cases or pods. With some vegetables, like lettuce, it's the leaves that we eat. When we harvest celery, we get rid of the roots and leaves and eat the stem or stalk. These aren't vegetables, but we still harvest them. They're gooseberry bushes, and we pick the fruit from them. We harvest and eat different parts of plants. Which parts of these plants do we eat? root, leaves, seed, stem, flower or fruit. <laughs> 